know my story begins way back in Mexico. I remember the first things I can remember was my mom taking us to church, you know, walking. Back in those days, there was, was really no transportation, but, but your feet. So I remember us walking in church all the time. Now that I look back, that's where we were going. I didn't. I, I don't think I realized that when I was a kid, but I remember walking to church, and I remember the church. I remember those things that my mom would teach us about God and and memorizing Bible verses. And I, you know, so in Mexico we had a good foundation. I think my problems started when we migrated to the states because we had to learn a whole new culture, whole new way of life, whole new school system. I think it, we were all overwhelmed in a way uh, and uh, I remember kind of being left to fend for myself so I ended up you know um, around the same people like me people that uh, needed protection needed leadership needed uh, role models and, and I, I began real quickly getting involved in gangs at the early age of 13 I remember being in juvie being in rehab for uh, always being high always being drunk and um, my probation officer not knowing what to do with me. You know, we, I got um, into gang fights. We, we, we got people died. You know, it, it was a bad, it was a bad scene. Like I said, all through my, my, my juvenile um, days, I, I was uh, pretty much in juvie most of the time, uh, in and out until I was uh, an adult. And then I ended up in county jails. I ended up being deported when I was 18 years old for uh, gun charges. And I came right back and kept on living the same way. Didn't even think about it. And I was gonna face more federal time and deportation. And I think that's where I started calling out to God, asking him for help. You know, if you were really there, help me. And he did answer me because, you know, I got bailed out and I fought my case. Uh, went through the Board of Immigration, through the Ninth Circuit, and God gave me my residency. And I knew that God had a purpose in my life. I just didn't know what that purpose was. I just didn't know exactly what he had for me. Um, after I got my residency card, I moved to Boise, Idaho, and um, with me and my family. And we ended up, uh, um, started going to church and, and um, you know, just try, trying to serve God in any way we could. We ended up going to City Hope, and I remember the first Sunday that we went to City Hope, they asked me if I knew Spanish, and I told them, yeah, I know Spanish. And they told me, well, you're going to Guatemala with us, and I told them, you know, if I can, I'll go with you. I remember getting out of that Sunday school, and my wife was like, would you really go to Guatemala with them? And I told them, yeah. Yeah, but you think they'll let me go? I, you know, I'm a deportee, I'm a felon. You think they're going to give me a passport? But I think I was just testing God, and... They did give me a passport. So I knew that, you know, I was meant to go to Guatemala and and witness over there and talk about my life and, and be an interpreter for them. And I've been doing that for the last seven years, interpreting and, and, and bringing the word of God and bringing medical supplies and stuff to the people of Guatemala, which totally changed my life, totally gave me a heart for missions. And also when I was in Guatemala, I, uh, I met a brother that goes into the prisons to uh, to speak to inmates in Guatemala. And when we got back to the States, we hooked up together and he gave me an application uh, and I filled it out and they accepted me. So, you know, it's another miracle for me, for being a, a ex you know, convict, an ex prisoner, to being able to go into the prison system and tell guys about God and how he loves us and how there's hope for us. You know, I think that's that's part of uh, what God made me to do. I think uh, my testimony, they can, they can really relate to it. They, they know they, they can relate to me from being an ex-felon, an ex-prisoner. They, I tell them that there is hope in their lives, that there is a there is a purpose for their lives. And I think that's my life. I think that they, that my life is, is, is a, a story of hope, a story of of love, a story of mercy, because you know, where God pulled me out of and the hope and the love that I feel in my life, I think it, it speaks uh, volumes to people. And if God can use me being a, a deportee and being able to go to missions and, and a, a ex felon that was locked up in a federal correctional facility to be able to go back into the prisons and be able to speak him and speak to them and give them a word of hope, um, I, you know, I think that's a blessing in itself. And I know that 
in a way that's why God let me go through the things that I went through so I can be useful in those ways in, in, in so I can go into places where people need to hear about hope and about love and about mercy and I think my story is a, a story about hope and about love and about mercy because you know from even from my beginnings from when I was in Mexico you know full of poverty full of just you know a lot of stuff that you know you see little kids huffing glue and stuff it, it was it was a bad place and from where God pulled us out put us in a good land you know the states United States Boise is beautiful you know I think it's 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 a story of mercy it's a story of mercy where he pulled me out from the gangs and the prisons you know and it, it, it you know it's a testimony of hope for me so you know I'm very thankful for for uh, for the things that God has done in my life and the things that he's still doing you know for being able to share my story story of hope